Lugia dominated Vancouver Regionals, taking six of the... What? What? Oh, no, no one cares? No one cares. Hey, Nick from Nightcard TCG, and today uh, we're going to be taking a look further, further into the future, away from Lugia total domination. Uh, first, I do want to say congrats to Ian Rob for winning the Vancouver Regionals with Lugia. I'm not wrong. Six of the top eight spots were Lugia. The other was an Arc Dura, and the other was uh, a Gudra, the Lost Zone Gudra. That was your top eight at Vancouver. I can't keep talking about Lugia forever, <laughs> so we're we're moving on. We're actually moving super ahead into the future. We're talking about a deck from Triple Beat, which is the newest release over in Japan, and this one's really, really interesting to me, and I kind of want to talk about it because it is a Meowskarada deck, which was my starter Pokemon for uh, when I played Pokemon Scarlet, so... I feel like I said that with a little bit of a southern accent, Pokemon Scarlet. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a Monday. We're doing Monday things. We're getting crazy. We're going to look at this deck, this Meowskarada deck from uh, that I found online. Before we do, if you haven't already, do me a favor, like, subscribe, comment, all that kind of stuff tells YouTube this is a good channel. Other people should watch it. This Meowskarada deck is not just a random one. It actually did pretty well at a tournament in Japan. I'm going to have all the information about it in the video description so i'll have links to where i found this deck and all that kind of stuff uh and, uh, all this all the stuff's in japanese so i don't really <laughs> i don't really know what it says i could google translate it but i'm a little lazy um but it did well so congrats to the individual that piloted this meow Skarada deck and uh yeah let's just let's just get let's get right to it here we go at poke gear and uh, we, we're going to be looking at some translated proxy cards that are brought to us by Justin Basil. So links to both Pokegear and Justin Basil, and really everything in this video is in the description. So please go check them out. Super, super useful and helpful. Now, the first thing we're going to talk about is Meowskarada EX. 310 health grass type stage 2 EX retreat cost of 2 fire weakness. Those are just the basic attributes. The ability Magic Bouquet, you'd have to discard a Grass Energy from your hand to use the ability, but if you do, you can put three damage counters onto one of your opponent's benched Pokemon. Now, it does have to be benched, and it does say once during your turn, which means if you have more than one Meowskarada, you can use this ability multiple times per turn, which is really, really cool. We have three Meowskarada EXs in here, so we could technically use this ability three times in a turn to put 90 damage onto a you know a benched pokemon which if you notice there's a couple of things in here there's bidoof if we do it twice we're knocking out a bidoof we do it three times we're knocking out a klefki or a manaphy uh opposing basic pokemon that are like evolving pokemon things like that it's going to be pretty easy to take an easy cheeky kind of ko or we can just put a decent amount of damage into something and soften it up why on earth do we need to soften it up? Well, Nail Scratch is the attack, and it does 100 damage for two colorless energies. But if your opponent's active Pokemon has any damage counters on it, you do an additional 120. So now we're hitting for 220 if they have any damage counters on it. Well, we just talked about an ability that lets us put damage counters onto our opponent's benched Pokemon. Now, Nick, the ability says put the damage counters on a benched Pokemon, and Nail Scratch has to, you know, the active Pokemon has to have damage counters on it. How does that help? Well, the answer is Radiant Alakazam with this painful spoons ability. Once during your turn, you may move up to two damage counters from one of your opponent's Pokemon to another one of their Pokemon. So, we use uh, Magic Bouquet to put damage onto an opposing Klefki. It's on the bench, and we put three damage counters on it. Well, we use Painful Spoons to move two of those damage counters over to our opponent's active Pokemon, whatever it is, and then we hit with Nail Scratch to do 220 plus the 20 we moved over. So we're actually hitting for 240, which is really nice. It is worth noting that we can power this attack up in a single attachment using double turbo energy. However, double turbo energy does reduce the attack cost of our, our attack damage by 20. So while we're not doing the 240 anymore, we're going to be doing 220. Still enough to knock out every 
mostly every Pokemon V, or at least any Pokemon V that's going to be playing. On top of that, Nail Scratch actually sets up damage pretty well for those bigger Stage 1 EXs and Stage 2 EXs. Nail Scratch does 100 damage. Okay, next turn it's going to do 220. So now we're hitting for 320, which is enough to knock out a lot of Stage 2 EXs, which is really cool. So we don't have to worry too much about the math there. We can use something like the Magic Bouquet and Painful Spoons to start moving damage around to really soften things up or get like extra easy KOs on something. Maybe they run to the bench. Well, we can use Painful Spoons to put damage counters on the active now. So Nail Scratch does that full 220. Something to keep in mind. Um, we do because we have... Meowth is an EX Pokemon to Stage 2. We need to evolve it from Sprigatito. Sprigatito, really nothing crazy. Search your deck for two basic energies. Uh, reveal them, put them into your hand. Not a terrible option, right? Going If you're going uh, your first turn, going second, you just attach an energy, gather some sunshine. It's cute. Not a bad option. And then we do have the Florgato. Really nothing we ever want to use. In fact, we only have one Florgato because... We don't really want to use it. We want to use our rare candy to go straight from Sprigatito to the Meowscarada. So we use the rare candy and there we go. Now we can find the rare candy through things like Beaverell. Beaverell here says one single turn, draw into your five cards in your hand. So we can thin the hand out with using things like Ultra Ball, discard two cards from your hand in order to play this, and then you search a deck for any Pokemon you want. So we can use Ultra Ball to discard a bunch of cards, search the deck for, say, a Meowscarada, and then we can use Beaverell to draw more cards so we can hopefully find a rare candy, and then we can evolve Sprigatito straight into Meowscarada with the rare candy. Pretty nice. We have cards like Colrus's Experiment. Look at the top five cards of your deck. Put three of them into your hand, two go into the Lost Zone. We're not going to need every card in this deck every single matchup. So if we're not playing something like a Mew, we can probably just get rid of the Drapion. If we're not playing something that like, you know, we already have two cleft keys in play and we call versus them. We don't, we probably don't need that third one. We, uh, we're playing something like Olugia where they can attack into the mill tanks really easy. We're playing Lost Zone decks where they can attack, knock out that mill tank really easily. Maybe we don't need it. We can go ahead and get rid of it. Uh, with, like the call versus and put it into the Lost Zone. So uh, Serena lets us discard cards from our hand so that we can, Draw, discard up to three and draw until we have five cards on the hand or acts as a boss's order specifically on Pokemon V. And in the early stages of rotation, we're still going to see V Pokemon. So Serena doesn't get completely useless, but it, the secondary effect isn't as potent anymore because you will start to see some basic Pokemon, some single prize Pokemon and some Pokemon EX. So not everything's going to be V, but it'll still be used at the very least. It could be used to discard some cards and draw so we could discard a bunch of cards like that and then uh we can find that rare candy through that raw draw we are running four copies of rare candy we really really want to make sure we find them so we can get those meowscarados into play now one other thing we can do to guarantee finding that meowscarada and the energies is we have the hisuian lilligant v-star star perfume is our v-star power once during your turn, search your deck for up to five in any combination of grass Pokemon and or grass energies and put them into your hand. So if we have the uh, the rare candy and we don't have the Meowscarada, well, if we have Lilligan in play, we could just go ahead and get the Meowscarada and a bunch of other stuff. We can get other grass Pokemon. Probably don't need to get too many grass Pokemon. We can go ahead and focus on getting some grass energies so we can go ahead and use Gardenia's Vigor so that we can power up our Pokemon. Draw two cards. If you drew any cards in this way, put up to two grass energies from your hand onto one of your benched Pokemon. Well, that's pretty convenient. It allows us to power up our second Meowscarada while we attack with the first one. Again, we can just attach a DTE for turn, and there you go. You're able to just start powering up this Meowscarada, start attacking immediately while using Gardenas to power up something like, whether it's a Lilligan V-Star you want to attack with, another Meowscarada, whatever. Look at V-Star's attack does say uh, it's 130 damage. Put an energy attached to this Pokemon into your hand. If you do, it does 100 more damage. 230 for three, and you save an energy so just in case this thing gets knocked out. It's not terrible. We're really using it for the Star Perfume, which is why we are running just a 1-1 line. Drapion's in here only for the Mew matchup. 
just to help us because Mew is still really good into post rotation. So uh, we want to make sure we have an answer for Mew. Klefki here is another answer for Mew. Prank Clock, as long as this Pokemon is in the active spot, each player's basic Pokemon in play have no abilities with the exception of Prank Lock. So Klefki's in the active. Our opponent can't use Genesect to draw cards, which is really cool. So if we have two Klefkis in play, now, our opponent can't even use a escape rope to get that Klefki out of the active because we just sent up another Klefki. We do run three, so it is something that we can do. They would have to then boss up something else, but then they are losing their supporter for the turn. However, Mew might not really care about that, so something to keep in mind. Mill Tank is used for uh, just a little bit of stall in case we do run into some pesky Pokemon V. They can't, uh, Pokemon V can't hit Mill Tank except for anything that has shred like. Uh, the aforementioned Mew, Giratina V-Star has Shred, which are guaranteed to see post-rotation. Uh, singles like Urshifu V-Max has Shred, even though why on earth would you use G-Max 1 blood to knock out a Mill Tank unless it's for a game? I don't know. It's a thing. We run a copy of it just as a stall option to buy us a turn or two if needed. Uh, we got a Mana Fee for some Bench Protection. We have all these, you know, delicate little flower cats, these little grass cats that we have to protect from sniping and Manaphy is going to allow us to do that. So some of the other supporters or trainers, we'll start with the trainers. We have a, a few Pokemon search options. We already talked about Ultra Ball. Nest Ball is making a reappearance in Scarlet and Violet. So we can go ahead, play this card from our hand, search a deck for a Pokemon, a basic Pokemon, and put it directly onto our bench. It is worth noting. Uh, it's not in this deck, and I think it might be a useful inclusion. Something like Luminion. I'm going to pull Luminion up. If you use Nest Ball to get this Luminion, Luminous Sign says it has to go from your hand to the bench. Nest Ball says it goes from the deck to the bench. So you can't use Nest Ball to get a Luminion and activate Luminous Sign. So just something to keep in mind. I know it's going to happen to someone, someone. They're going to nest ball for a Luminion, thinking they're going to be able to get a boss's orders to win the game. That's not going to happen. You also can't play nest ball if you have a full bench because you would have nowhere to put that Pokemon after you search. So um, nest ball, in some ways, not as good as quick ball in, in those regards. No hand thinning, no deck thinning if your bench isn't full. Um, no... Uh, you can't activate Luminous Sign or things like that with something like Nest Ball. So, I, some people really love it. I don't know how I feel about it yet. I've never played in a format with Nest Ball, so I don't know. We also have Hisumian Heavy Ball. Let's us look at our, our prize cards and then get a basic Pokemon. Put it into our hand and then put Heavy Ball into the prize. This is really useful. If our Alakazam is prize, we are one of Drapion's prize, maybe our Hisumian Lilligan V Star or V is prize, something like that. We're able to get those basic Pokemon out of the prizes and swap it with the heavy ball. Uh energy retrieval is really nice. We can go ahead and get up to two basic energy cards from our discard and put them into our hand. This is great so that we can use the Gardenia's Vigor. We discard a bunch of um you know, we just discard some energies with something like uh, a Serena. Maybe we have to discard them. I don't know. Uh, something gets knocked out. A Masquerada, Masquerada gets knocked out. We can go ahead and power up another one immediately by playing the Energy Retrieval, putting those two energies into the hand, and then Gardenia's power up a benched one. We got Escape Rope for a little bit of maneuverability. Not, not the most. I'm not sure if I really like Escape Rope. In this, uh, obviously, whoever piloted it used it well because they, they did well in, in the tournament they played in. But something to keep in mind, uh, you might want to maybe do like a 1-1 one, one switch. Definitely not switch cart. We have too many evolution Pokemon here to really fully make use of switch cart. Uh, so switch, escape rope, something like that. Just a way to get the Pokemon you power up with Gardenias into the active when you need it. Copy a judge. Both players shuffle their hand into their deck. Draw four. This is really nice, especially against all the Lost Zone decks you're guaranteed to see. Roxanne, when your opponent has taken three prize cards, that's when you're able to play Roxanne. Both players shuffle the hands into the deck. Your opponent draws two, you draw six. One of the comeback mechanisms we were promised in Scarlet and Violet. Except this didn't come out in Scarlet and Violet. You have to really see any of them, but hey, you know, Pokemon, they know everything. Boss's orders, pull up one of your Pokemon, your opponent's Pokemon from the bench. Maybe something we already damaged 
previously that we can now knock out with Nail Scratch. I don't know, whatever you want. Maybe you're trying to stall something. You could do whatever makes you happy. Artisan is a new stadium card. Once during each player's turn, they may search for a basic Pokemon that does not have a rule box and put it directly onto their bench. That's really cool. Uh, if we're running low on Nest Balls or we don't want to discard a bunch of stuff with Ultra Balls super early to go ahead and get, you know, like a second Sprigatito or something or third Sprigatito, whatever, we can go ahead and use Artisan. Just get the Sprigatito, put it directly to the bench. We cannot get Radiant Alakazam. It specifically says Pokemon, basic Pokemon without a rule box, so we can't get Radiant Alakazam. We can't get the Hisuian Lilligant or the Drapion. We can get Bidoof, we can get Miltank, Klefki, we can get uh, Sprigatito, Manaphy. Any, any of those are valid Pokemon targets for Artisan, but the Vs and the Radiant are not. Double Turbo Energy, uh, Grass Energies, we got six. Uh, and then the last card is Clara. Choose one of your, choose one or both. Put up to two Pokemon from your discard pile into your hand. Two basic energies from your discard pile into your hand. Um, it's just a way of recovering stuff that we might have had to discard with Ultra Ball. Things that might have gotten knocked out. You know, we're playing against a Mew deck. They knock out our Drapion. They don't have Lost City in play, so it goes to the discard. Oh, well, we're just going to go ahead and Clara an energy and the Drapion back. And then we can promote this Clef Key. Attach the energy for turn, manually retreat, send up the Drapion, attack into the VMAX, we win. That's always a fun play that we could pull off with Clara. Because we do have a few one of supporters, Clara, Gardenas, Boss, Roxanne, Judge. You, I, I think, I, I don't know how Illuminion is not in this deck. I don't know how we don't have any damage modifiers in this deck. Defiant Belt, Choice Belt, something to help offset the damage reduction from double turbo energy and just make sure we're getting those nice KOs with Meowscarada, especially into stage one EXs. Um, maybe they're just not being played as much. Maybe that's why this deck has kind of been able to do well. It's like I attack twice with nail with nail scratch. I do 100 and then 220, 320. I'm knocking out everything or I'm doing 220, enough to knock out a, a V, uh, you know, like a Pokemon V or something, which is enough. But getting those V Star KOs, even we have Nail Scratch, we do 220. Well, we move two damage with the Radiant Alakazam. That's 240. That's getting some Stage One EXs, but it's not getting all of them, and it's not really getting any Pokemon V Star. However, a Choice Belt. I don't know why I put the inflection on the on the belt. But adding a Choice Belt now gets you an extra 30 damage. Now we're hitting that 270 mark, right? 220. Uh, 220 plus 2 is two, 240. And 30 is 270. Uh, yeah, we're still 10 shy. We'd have to get all 30 damage from the uh, Magic Bouquet onto a V-Star to, to take a one-shot on it. So you might be taking two shots on... Anything that's a V or, or greater than a V, V star, V max, you're taking two shots on. Some uh, st all, all stage two EXs you're taking two shots on. And maybe even some stage one EXs you're taking one shots on. So that's actually a little, a little disappointing. Oh man, that's so tough to be like 270 and you could throw a Radiant Holucha, not a Radiant Holucha, you could throw the new Holucha, the flying flying entrance flying entry holucha that's coming in skull and violet base that when you play it from your hand to the bench you put two damage counters one or you put one damage counter on two of your opponent's bench pokemon that's something you can do in this as well i don't know that's so tough like as i'm thinking about it i just that just feels so bad to be like so shy there's not a lot of stuff in the format that's weak to grass either so you're not really able to take advantage of uh, the grass typing weakness. We don't have, aside from Drapion, we don't have any other attackers in here. The Lilligan's okay. Again, you're doing 260. You you can you can do 260. Lilligan actually can knock out the V-Stars. 260 if you return energy to your hand. And the damage we move over from Magic Bouquet and Radiant Alakazam brings us to 280 exactly. So... We do have the one-hit KO potential on every Stage 1 V, uh, Stage 1 EX and V-Star using the Lilligant V-Star. We have the 
two hit KO potential on some on, on Pokemon V Maxes and Stage Two EXs with Meowth and we have the one hit KO potential on some EXs and Pokemon V, like some basic EXs and Pokemon V with Meowth as well. So. And then, of course, Mew. So there's a lot of stuff going on there. I know I just kind of probably made it a little confusing. Just to summarize, to reiterate, Meowth can one-hit KO basic Pokemon EXs and Pokemon V. Meowth can also one-hit KO Stage 2 Pokemon EXs and Pokemon V Maxes. And Lilligant V-Star can take a one-hit KO on Stage 1 Pokemon EX and Pokemon V-Star. Drapion... Mew. I'm always going to say that. <laughs> I'm always going to do that. Um, do I think this deck is crazy good overall? I'm unsure. There's not a ton of fire in the format, so it's, it might be a little hard to take a one-hit KO on, on that Meowskarada EX. That's something that's kind of cool, but that's kind of true of most EXs uh, that aren't like, electric or psychic, because there is you know, there's always the room for fighting and for Dark to come in pretty easily. Um, so, yeah, I think it's an overall okay deck. I think you, it might be something that you enjoy, have fun with. It's just a cool way to use some new Pokemon, to use some new cards and uh, get a little strategy in there, kind of set some stuff up. This might be the kind of deck that you throw a, a Metacham V in. You, got, you already got the Double Turbo Energy. You got the Gardenias to power it up in a single turn. So we go ahead, get the Yoga Loop on something like a Manaphy or um, like a Bidoof. You put a bunch of damage. You use, you use two Magic Bouquets onto a Manaphy. And then you go ahead and bring up a, a Metacham and you Yoga Loop it. And now you just did 80 damage. You take out the Manaphy, get a second turn. Manaphy isn't, doesn't get blocked by placing damage counter. So you can actually go ahead and do that. It's pretty cool. You don't have to worry about using boss's orders because Yoga Loop lets you put two damage counters on any of your opponent's Pokemon, so it can be, it can be a bench Manaphy. That's that's an option. I actually kind of like the Yoga Loop option in this play in this deck with the Masquerade. You get like I said, two Masqueradas. You can go ahead, Energy Retrieval, two energies out of the discard, and then discard one for each Masquerade. Attach a DTE for turn to a um, something like a ooh ooh. You have a Masquerada in the active. It has two Grass Energies. Retreat into a, a Metacham V. Attach a DTE for turn if, if you're not going to Gardenia's Vigor. Energy Retrieval. The two energies you just discarded off the Masquerada. Discard one for each. If, right, if you have two Masqueradas in play, each one of course requires you to discard a Grass Energy. So that's two Grass Energies back into the discard. 60 damage onto something like a Manaphy. Because this also says place three damage counters, so it's bypassing Manaphy. Um, and then Yoga Loop the Manaphy for the for the KO. Right? If your opponent has a Klefki, a Comfy, uh, something like that, any any of those kind of things, a Bidoof in uh, on their bench, you can Yoga Loop plays might be kinda good. Kind of like I'm actually kinda liking that the more I talk about it, the more I think about it. But yeah, uh that's that's the deck. So there you go, uh, Meowskarada, it's a thing. I don't know how much I'm crazy about it. I'm sure there are ways we can change the deck and make it fit a little bit more our format and the kind of things that you're expected to see. But there you go. I hope you enjoyed it, found it informative. If you did, like, subscribe, comment, all kind of stuff. Tell YouTube this is a good channel. Other people should watch it. And I'll see you next time.